What up, fellow nerds, and welcome to Not Your Status Quo's New Mutants Trailer Breakdown. If you uh, like our video, make sure that you uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, go ahead and share it with all your friends. And don't forget to ring the bell so you'll be notified of future videos. Trailer starts out with some things falling from the sky and Danny uh, kind of catching them. Looks like it's a dream sequence. This is probably this this movie is probably going to have a lot. Her power is kind of creating three D illusions from people mm -hmm. and the demon bear, which this movie is based off of. If you haven't read the Demon Bear saga, it is the New Mutants equivalent to Dark Phoenix. It's really their sort of best story. Uh, very dark. Well, okay, so you say best story, and then we saw Dark Phoenix, uh, at least yeah, with two the dark, different versions of it. The movie <laughs> Dark Phoenix has never been done right. There's a reason they've made two different Dark Phoenix sagas to the movies, because it's a great comic series. Now, Demon Bear is an excellent comic book arc. Will it translate to the movie? What's can only so. Yes. And then we hear, what is the last thing you remember, Danny? We see those faces coming through the wall, which once again, probably a dream sequence, the demon bear trying to scare everyone to death, as we'll hear a little bit later. Mm -hmm. You said we had to run. You see them fleeing from an exploding car, Danny waking up in the hospital. I do think that's when her parents were killed by the demon bear. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that was like some sort of a, a flashback or something that took place uh, prior. And we hear the read. The doctor saying, the reason you survived is because you are a very uncommon girl. So, mm. so in this in this particular movie, mutants are considered uncommon, or is that just a, a, a phrase that she's using? I think it's just a phrase she's using, because she does talk about mutants later on, which I wasn't mm -hmm. sure they were going to use in this film, because of the Disney buyout of Fox and everything else. I didn't know how they were going to handle that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm still wondering uh, that as well, because I know we were talking about that, um, I believe, when we were speaking about uh, Spider-Man. We were wondering if they were going to begin using the word mutant or not. And so I'm wondering if uh, they did uh, They did still show the 20th Century Fox logo, so I don't know if they are still considering this separate from the rest of their larger MCU or if they are folding it in. It's still you know, to be known. Yeah, to me, it was like, I, when I saw the 20th Century Fox, is this the last thing that's going to be under that banner? And it, and if so, does that mean it doesn't translate to the MCU? Yeah. And if it doesn't, is this going to be the only New Mutants we see? Or could they be folded <clears throat> into... I mean, if it does well enough, they could fold them into oh, the yeah, MCU, yeah. just like they did Deadpool. Mm -hmm. True, true. Then we hear, you are not alone, and we see a shot of the hospital at their end, which looks an awful lot like a school for gifted youth. <laughs> uh, and then uh, not anymore and you see a group therapy shot with all the other new mutants you see you know magic you see cannibal you see sunspot you see uh, wolf spain which is a cool shot and then she says do you know what mutants are so obviously the rest of them have been there for probably some time mm -hmm. she's new she's going to be introduced to the group and we're gonna she's gonna find out that she has this power so this may be when she first learned of her powers, because if you don't know, mutants aren't born with their powers. As they enter puberty, it kind of comes out in stressful situations or when they're anxious or whatever. And then we see them as they're sitting around. Would anyone like to share their first time? And we get Rain, <laughs> played by Maisie Williams, uh, Wolf's Band. She's I was thirteen. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a dream. Yeah, how do you like that? Uh, um, so who's uh, the blonde girl? Uh, which character she's supposed to be She's uh, Ilian Rasputin. Yeah. Uh, how do you like how, like, just <laughs> uncaring she looks as she talks about the amount of people that she's slaughtered like it was no big deal? And that's her character. And that's, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be, I'm glad they, seem, seemingly they've gotten all the characters they pulled down. They a lot of right out of the pages. Because, you know, Rain was a very, like, church-going young girl. Mm -hmm. And so this power to her always felt evil to her. And you see her in the church in her <clears> flashback. <throat> you know, you see the beginning of her transformation... And then she says, I just lost control. And it looks like they spent some money on, on some of the effects because not only does you know, her trans, transforming into this wolf look really well, we'll mm -hmm. see more of it later. Uh, then we see uh, Sam, Cannibal. He, I just started panicking. People got hurt. 
And if you don't know what Cannonball's power is, he's able to, like, blast. He can fly, and he's basically blasting. And while he's doing this, he's invulnerable. He can't be hurt. So he probably started blasting and knocked some walls down, knocked some building over, and people got hurt. Then we see Roberto, who is Sunspot. And he says, my girlfriend had a party. And you see, like, this sort of demon hand grabbing him. And I think that's a scene later in the movie, not probably, actually yeah. a flashback for him. But Sunspot, for those of you that don't know, he has the ability to take solar energy and basically turn it into super strength. And you kind of see a scene with that, him actually using it later. Clark. And then we have the scene which <laughs> Doug was talking about a minute ago was Ileana, who is magic, saying, I killed 18 men, one by one. Right? <laughs> and it really, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with magic, Ileana Rasputin, she's Colossus's little sister. That and a lot. she has the ability to basically open up these portals to other dimensions. And at one point in the comics, she rules Limbo. And she she's a very cool character, and I'm very glad she's in this. And something that comes up later, which really made the trailer to me, and, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about it when we get there. But, you know, they're really getting all these characters down. It seems like they have all their personalities down well. And I'm seeing them talk just in this scene made me very hopeful for this movie. That's good. That's uh, nice to see that um, they're being true to true to the characters when they can be. Uh, we've talked about this in some of our um, other reviews and breakdowns and everything, that uh, in certain instances they've had to change up the characters just so they translate better to film, like Thor being a good example. But in this case, it's nice to see them being a little bit more closer to their uh, their comic book origins, which is not something they generally do in, uh, in these X-Men uh, movies. Yeah, Fox has not been... Well known Faithful. for getting these yeah. right, so this is good. And then we see, uh, you know, Danny uh, touching the force field oh, around yeah, the hospital, up, yeah. and Liliana is like, "It's not a hospital; it's, it's a cage," which made me think, "Who has locked them up?" Because I mean, it could probably be not the government. The, uh, and it's, well, it's not you know, like uh, maybe an offshoot of the Weapon X program or something. Xavier is in this movie. He is? Well, at least that's what I, I read. He's well, like not, not, not he's, he's not a character. A he's not a ca main character. He's like a cameo. Okay. So, okay. well, and originally, uh, I can't think of his name, but there was going to the post credit scene was going to be Mister Sinister. Oh, okay. Hmm. Now that has supposedly been scrapped, and they're going to have something else there. But that would have been that would have been nice. Hearing that, that would have been him running that school and probably. We can make the assumption they're going to escape from this hospital slash cage mm -hmm. in this movie, and maybe would have hooked up with Xavier in a school mm -hmm. of gifted, you know, youngsters and the X Men. Yeah, it could be like that. And a, that would introduce, you know, get Mister Sinister on their trail, trying to get them back for future sequels. But it sounds like that is not going to happen now. Well, depending on which uh, which timeline this is taking place mm -hmm. in, so again, it's gotten really wonky with uh, you know Days of Future Past and some of these other installments, um, depending on. Even if this fits into that X Men universe, yep. <clears throat> um, this could be you know Mystique trying to raise her uh, her version of the Brotherhood or, of Mutants or whatever. I doubt it would be Magneto. I don't think he would have treated them like that. He experimented on mutants in the past in uh, in the comics, but he never really like tried to uh, um, get rid of their powers. It looks like that's what they're trying to do here. Very possibly, yeah. You know, to control them or something. Or try to take their powers or yeah. you know, figure yeah. it out. Yeah, It's definitely more Mr. Sinister-like with genetics mm -hmm. and not Magneto-like where he'd be like, come follow me and right, let's, yeah. let's destroy the homo sapiens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we kind of see some monitors with them kind of watching all of the patients. <laughs> uh, patients. And then it is important we find out your power so we can help you get better. And yeah, that's kind that's of the what line makes that we, me think that they're trying to get rid of them or find a, a cure for mutants. Yeah, like they think they're yeah. evil or whatever, not right. And then Danny mm -hmm. says, I saw some things I don't think she wanted me to see. And we kind of see a montage of her on a lie detector. She's talking to Rain. And then we see this kind of really cool scene with this door. Liliana and Rain and I think Danny are walking down the hall. And you see this door just being covered with this, you know, black substance. And I think this is going to be, as the demon bear is sort of using his powers to make them see this and kind of bring up these horrors. And, you know, we've heard this is kind of a horror film. 
And so we think we're going to see a lot of these elements, and I think this is one where it's the demon bear kind of leading him down this path. And then, I don't think we're here to get better. Hmm. Which, once again, leads back to what Doug was talking about. Whoever is running this hospital cage is not looking out for their best interest. They're right. either trying to control them, take their powers, take away their powers, or do something. And I think we'll definitely find out more that the demon bear is not the only villain in this movie. I think we're going to have... Obviously, the people running the school. Yeah, I don't think the people running the school know about demon bears. So it could be almost like three different factions, the, mm-hmm. the patients, the faculty, and then kind of demon bear. I almost wonder if uh, the... Uh uh, prisoners are, you know, the children. I wonder if they're going to um, help out to the uh, the doctors, whoever it is that's in charge, you know, save their lives and in order to sort of like, you know, further push to the point that, you know, mutants aren't the enemy of humans. Right. The, the, the faculty will find out, oh, my God, they saved yeah. us. At least some of them, they mm-hmm. are, you know, good people. Not all mutants are bad. Just because right. yeah, you have I thought they were good people. <laughs> well, the ones I've met, yeah. well, maybe not Ileana. <laughs> you know, she killed eighteen men one by one. Right, right. Maybe they were bad men. Yeah, they were all bad. She's Dexter they in another dimension. They were children, yeah. innocent children. <laughs> as long as it wasn't Baby Yoda, they were they were all Baby Yodas, and they were all in an orphanage. <laughs> was it? The, was it the younglings? It Did was. She go Anakin Skywalker, <laughs> and then it says takes your greatest fear and makes you live through it until it kills you, which is spot on demon bear. So, I mean, well, we see the demon bear too and kind of in this, which the yeah. CGI looks great, but really confirming that they're really adapting this story. And you see Danny running through a forest. You see Sam cannibal in a mine. You see uh, Rain kind of at a grave with a bunch of symbols, once again, very religious, so kind of all kind of living out their fears. Mm-hmm. And then we see Rain in a confession booth, and you kind of hear a squeaky door opening. She's like, who's there? And that's mm-hmm. when we see the demon bear, kind of the face coming at. I don't. I think this is kind of a trailer trick. It's not going to be coming at her at that scene necessarily. Probably, yeah. But we do get an image of it. And then we hear, we can get out of this together, and we see a montage. We see Sunspot, Sunspot's powers where he's kind of charging up. And you see him kind of pulling in all the solar energy to get strength. You see Cannonball's blasting power start to go off a little bit. And then for me, what made this trailer, you see Magic walking and getting her soul sword forming under her. Then you see her kind of falling out of one of her portals yeah, that's pretty cool. to fight the demon bear. And if you look very closely, and we're going to take a screenshot here and put it up, to the left of the screen, there is something flying around blowing fire at the demon bear. For those of you who are, you know, huge X-Men fans and know about Kitty Pride, I think this is Lockheed. I think it's Kitty Pride's hmm. little dragon. Because in the comics, she was close with Liliana. And maybe Liliana brings that in from whatever dimension she popped through. Hmm. Lockheed comes with her and then can maybe be friends with Kitty Pride at a later date. But you can that definitely cool. see it's something. <clears throat> Very interesting. Yeah. And overall, you know, the first trailer that we saw a couple years ago really... Wasn't that impressive? Yeah, it was very big. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think this one did a lot better of at well, least showing us some mutant powers. I'm wondering when they uh, when they show that original trailer. I'm wondering if it was because it was still kind of up in the air whether they were going to be uh, you know recutting the movie or you know doing any sort of reshoots because we do know that there was uh, some um, controversy over uh, you know the director not happy with uh, some of the moves that 20th Century Fox was making and uh, Disney kind of returned it back to the original. Um, Right. For, for what Doug's talking about is 20th Century Fox went through extensive reshoots for this movie because they didn't like Josh Boone's original cut. Mm-hmm. And he was not happy, and he kind of stepped away from the movie. And what was really cool about it, right before this trailer dropped, Josh Boone on Twitter was announcing the video, and people were like, hey, well, what's going on? And you, we basically found out that Disney was came in and said, we like your cut. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to kind of do away. I'm sure they did so, some of the reshoots to add things because every movie does that. It's not a right. bad thing yeah. that happens. Mm-hmm. And I think they upped the CGI a little bit because they had time to do it because this trailer looks absolutely beautiful. I mean, it really does. Yeah. There's finish that her getting the soul stone and dropping it, it looks like finished CGI. It's not something that has a lot of work left to do. And I, for one, I went from being like, I'll see it, but I don't have a lot of high hopes to. 
watching this and seeing how they're treating the characters and seeing you know certain elements, I'm pretty fired up about this movie now. So I, uh, I think it looks okay. I think it looks pretty good. Um, I will definitely, uh, you know, obviously I'll go see it. But um, hey, I'll my, go with you. My, uh, my, <laughs> I appreciate that. I didn't invite you, but do, I mean, okay. Do, do I'm guys, inviting myself. Do you, okay. do you guys mind if I come? Yeah, you can come too. You oh, can good, come good, too. Good, good. Yeah. No, third eye but, is a good perspective. Uh, yeah, my, my hype train, it's not quite running as fast. It's, you know, I've been burned by too many bad X-Men movies to the point where I'm just like, okay, we'll see. Well, I mean, I don't know don't. how much Disney could have saved it. Remember, there's been good X-Men movies too. We first had class. X2, okay. X-Men First Class. Even though they killed an indestructible character, but uh, we won't get into that. Mm-hmm. You know, Days of Future Past was okay. Yeah. Let's let's yeah. forget about the Dark Phoenixes <laughs> and the uh, X threes. And, and what what about um, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine? Uh, they they made a Wolverine Origins movie. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, I guess I could have been. Must have been a fever dream. God, everybody hates that. I, I didn't think it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, let me just say, Dave's that. opinion does not <laughs> represent those. Of <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was terrible. That's what I said. I didn't say anything else. I did think it was terrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have but, our disagreements um, here. The uh, the other thing that I'm curious about, uh, something that I've been wondering uh, since we saw this latest trailer. Now, um, do you think that Disney is going to be pulling their their normal thing that they do with their comic book movies and uh, sort of switching things around and putting things that aren't actually in the movie just just to kind of mislead people? Do you think they think that highly of this movie that they they don't want to give away spoilers, or do you think that this is uh, this was handled by Twentieth Century Fox and put together before? I think Disney, Disney had input, over? and I think. I think it's a different animal for them because they know right now if they put out an MCU movie, they can put a trailer of just, you know, Scarlett Johansson filing mm-hmm. her nails and people are still going to go see oh, that movie. Oh, what does it mean? Yeah, yeah. They, they know how to get you to the theater. Yeah. You know, and I'm, yeah. and I'm thinking like you said, you're, my optimism is very tempered mm-hmm. for this movie. Did it? Did your did did your hype jump a little bit with this trailer? It did. So, okay. Yeah, it went up from, de- definitely from where it was. But I don't want to get all hyped about it because what will happen yeah, is I'll get hyped. I'll get in there and I'll be like, oh, you know, if I go in there expecting less and I get more than I expect, you know, then that's well, a happy movie. I, I tell you what, you guys, uh, I'll let you both be hyped and I will be the uh, the cloud that hovers over you <laughs> and, and rains down, uh, you know, sadness and despair. This movie's going to suck. I don't He's like it. Dark Cloud. <laughs> He's, that's his new, uh, everything. <laughs> that's his new superhero name. Dark Cloud yeah. over here. His shirt even matches. <laughs> All movies are terrible. <laughs> I want the Snyder Cut. <laughs> and now, you know, the question we've been asking at some of our trailer breakdowns, do you think there's going to be a post credit scene? I think there is. Any thoughts on what it could be? I think it is going to be uh, sort of tying into what uh, Dave was talking about. He mentioned that Xavier is supposed to make a cameo. I think Which it's Xavier? Going to have, uh, is it going to be Patrick Stewart? I think it's, McAvoy. No, I think it's going to be McAvoy. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think he's going to make an appearance and he's going to tell them uh, about this great school that he's got for gifted youngsters or some nonsense. And uh, you know. Now, do you think there's any chance they've already recast Xavier for the MCU and we're going to see that Xavier? Mm. Oh, Huh. Interesting thought. That is an interesting thought. I was wondering something uh, along that same line uh, when I first watched this uh, trailer, if Disney was going to use this opportunity to create their own X universe, or if this was going to be still part of the original one. So that is a, that's, you bring up a good point. I don't know. And, yeah, the fact... If it would have came over the Marvel Studios banner, which mm-hmm. I don't think they could do. They, they did. Really they did show it. a Marvel Studios banner. Mm-hmm. Well, they showed the Marvel one, oh, not that's the true. Marvel yeah, Studios. Yeah, right. But they could, especially with all the stuff. You know, we know Doctor Strange, uh, mm-hmm. Madness and the Multiverse, even though they lost their director. And we all still... know how much Dave loves the multiverse idea. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> we could see them pulled in somehow, which would be weird that the new mutants kind of come before the rest of the X-Men, but they could, you know, finagle it and have the X-Men be before them. We would just be introduced to them first. They could end up going like a, uh, you know, um, a prequel route too and uh, say, okay, you know, here's the new mutants, but like 13 years before or something. Yeah. Little did you know, in this hospital <laughs> before, before Danny and Roberto. In the red 80s, because everybody <laughs> no, loves the 80s. This will blow your mind. Um, Anya Taylor-Johnson, or Joy, I mean, 
Uh, I'm thinking of uh, Quicksilver. Anyway, yeah. her and McAvoy were both in Glass. Oh, that's right. That's true. Yeah, you're yeah, right. He comes in it. Maybe he comes in, and, <laughs> and this is <laughs> the hospital from Glass or something. That'd be funny. But right. That's yeah. gonna happen. That that definitely does bring up, um, you know, <laughs> an unusual circumstance of there having been two different Quicksilvers in. Uh, <laughs> in these movies, you know, but. I think they will just give it like a kind of a nod type thing, like a Captain America mm-hmm. seeing um, uh, Human Torch. Human Torch. Oh yeah. You know, if they saw each other, they'd be like, yeah. and then that would probably be it. Hmm. But what do you guys think? Are you hyped for this movie? Did this trailer kind of bring it up a little bit, or are you even could care less that it's going to be coming to the theater? Let us know in the comments. We would love to hear from you, and we'll talk to you guys next time.